Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Claudia Monticelli here, host of the podcast, Multiple Voices. And this is a special episode because it's my 100th episode of all time. So I really would like to celebrate. I've been thinking about it, but I can't take out the spumante or the champagne. You wouldn't even (laughs) taste it. So I thought, let's have a wonderful guest on. And so today I have with me a woman after my own heart, Joanne Richards. Say hello, Joanne, to our audience. Hello. How are you? Congratulations on your 100th episode. <laughs> Thank you. And Joanne is speaking to us from Portland, Oregon. Um, who is Joanne? Well, she's got two sides to her life story. And I think I'm going to give you a little bit of both and then we'll have questions for her. All right, she's a native Californian now living in Portland, Oregon, and she has a thriving uh, bookkeeping practice. And I, you know, that already gave me a headache. When we were talking about Oregon and the wonderful wines, you said wines giving me a headache. Well, bookkeeping gives me a headache. (laughs) She's the wonder of, she's the wonder. (laughs) She's the mother. (laughs) She's the mother of a grown daughter and proud grandmother of five. That alone is a record. When Just oh three. oh, oh. Three. sorry <laughs> oh the big numbers are coming after <laughs> three all right see she dramatically changed her life after six there we go six marriages that include abuse included abuse divorce death and husband number seven is in count incarcerated for a crime he didn't commit now somebody normal people would slit their wrists at this point. <laughs> You know, and we're laughing. She's laughing. We have been laughing since we we got on. Um, so, but wait, there's more. Now, Joanne left the Mormon Church, and for not everyone knows what the Mormon Church is like. And maybe we can lead with that. Um, and she never looked back. And through many struggles, she found her strengths, her gifts, and inner power, and learned that dreams can and dreams do come true. She's recent, recently published her first book, Mid, I like that you announced it as your first, so there's more to come. The book's title is Midlife Magic, and here she shares stories and lessons learned and offering the hope that it's never too late and you can follow a new path and change your lives for the better. Let's start, and the topic that we're going to talk about has nothing to do with we what I have just presented her as because well first let's start and lead with the mormon church what brought you to you know go there what how did how did you get there how did i become a mormon yeah oh i grew up in a fairly non-religious family but we were methodists if you want to call it that right that's the church my parents took me to yeah and then we started camping with a family that were mormons and Uh one of their daughters became my best friend and Ah. i i liked i liked the wholesome family culture of the mormon church so i said well i I think i want to join that church and my parents were fine with that so i joined Ah. that church when i was 12. oh my goodness when you didn't know better yeah no (laughs) And I never had a problem with the church. Again, it was just the the crappy husbands I married that happened to be Mormon. Oh, um, oh now I get it. Yeah, I now married I get five it. Mormons out of seven. Mm. I married five. Wow, Mormons, and they were all terrible husbands. So, yeah. and when you, know, you say I, had, I never looked back, what was it? What was the straw that broke the camel's back? About leaving the church? Yes, about leaving the church. It was just, well, when I met number seven, yeah. uh, Mark, we just started talking about all kinds of things. Uh-huh. And and spirituality and not religion. And he just opened my eyes up to, well, there's more to, there's more to life than just, you know, believing in one certain religion. And also, it was partly, it's like, when you're a Mormon, you, you're at church almost, well, for several hours on Sunday. Yeah. And I wanted to visit him and more than I wanted to be at church. I said, like, well, that's something telling. Yeah. And all <laughs> yeah. of a sudden, I just realized I didn't need to go. I didn't need to be a member of that church anymore. I didn't need to, like, right. have my whole life. Right. You know, it's like it wasn't traumatic. It wasn't, you know, nobody 
in authority in the church abused me. It was just the the men were terrible husbands. Uh-huh. You know, ab- abu- and you could say they abused their power. You know, I'm the head of the household. Personal. Crap, right? But, right. Yeah. So it was it was a personal thing. It wasn't you know it just anyway. It wasn't the church. Um, it wasn't a church leader that abused right. me or you know traumatized mm-hmm. me. Or anything. I see. So, but it was just all of a sudden I just didn't need it, and it's like oh okay okay and gone I, did been yeah. there done that yeah 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 so. Okay. It was a lot simpler than a lot of people have it. Thank goodness. So now, you know, the title of your book is Midlife Magic. And that's one of the topics that I want to talk of, magic, because there are um, a lot of uh, topics that you can speak about that not very many people like to talk about. They don't even like to hear talk about that. One of them is aliens. One of them is UFOs, another is paranormal elementals, and the people will scratch their heads and say, well, what is that? And magic itself is not very clear to people. I, You have your choice of where to start with that, because, you know, I'm trying to think what came first, the, the chicken or the egg is, shall we start with paranormal phenomena yes. in general? What is it? Yes. For me, it's the the ability to sense the presence and communicate with spirits. Okay. And I apparently had that ability when I was still married to husband number three, who was a funeral director. So long before. Oh wait 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 a funeral (laughs) director. Now that is interesting because that will give you right that brings you right into that, you know the world after and the world now is that how was that fundamental in in the experiences that you had or was it just well, coincidental that it happened with him as a mormon you believe in an afterlife yes so okay so i believed that and then he happened to be a funeral director for a few years especially for mormon funerals uh-huh anyway so um so the afterlife, the concept of an afterlife didn't scare me, but I hadn't thought about, well, what would it be like to see a ghost or what would it be like to, you know, feel a ghost or whatever. Right. And and we he we lived in Southern California and he needed to do he needed to transport a body and conduct a graveside service for this elderly woman who passed. Mm-hmm. And I went with him. So we're, you know, so the the funny part is, you know, we stop by the side of the road and take a nap in this van with a casket sitting there. So it's like, who does that? But we get we get to Northern California, and I think there were maybe two family members because she was quite an elderly lady that passed. But we're having this nice, simple little ceremony in the cemetery, and all of a sudden, I feel this wonderful presence, like between me and the husband, and I think the family members were on the other side of him, and I think. Oh, what is that? It's like I think it's the lady, <laughs> you know, who's you know, because she's ha- you know here at her funeral. It's like I think it's the lady. Well, this is really cool. And so, okay, that was fine. And I didn't. And I used to sing at a lot of funerals that he conducted, but I didn't always, you know, feel that the spirit right. there. I was just there to sing a song and whatever. And that that's what it was. Yeah. I remember um, when we lived in Ohio. He was no longer a funeral director, but the. The mother of his brother-in-law passed and I had met her while she was alive. And again, she was another elderly woman. Well, I sang at her funeral and then I could just tell that as I looked at the back of the room, the back of the chapel, I go, her her spirit's like hanging out near the ceiling in that particular corner. And I just knew she was there. And it wasn't like she was saying anything to me. I just knew she was there. She was hanging out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fast forward many years and um, after I met Mark, the current husband, and I had a newspaper for a while, and I was talk- writing about cool places to go visit in the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area. And he said, well, why don't you go check out this USS Hornet aircraft carrier <clears throat> in Alameda, which is next to Oakland. And, you know, I hear there's ghosts on board. It's like, okay, you know, why not? But before, before I knew there were ghosts, he said, well, it's, it's got a lot of cool military history. So oh. I went down there and I did the tour and learned about the military history, wrote up, wrote about that. Yeah. And then he goes, oh, there's a psychic going to be giving a talk about the ghosts oh. on the Hornet. So oh. I go, well, I'll go, I'll go listen to that. Wow. And it is, it is very famous now as an aircraft carrier. It's a museum 
and it, it's very famous for its ghosts. And so a lot of paranormal investigators go there and they do like sleepovers and the, the docents tell ghost stories and sometimes people see weird things. But I happened to go there with one of the docents and she was a psychic and sh so we could go after hours. So we went as visiting hours were closing. And so she took me in these, these areas and was like, okay, we're going down this one hall. And I was like, oh, it's really cold in here. And the walls <laughs> feel very damp. Yeah. And so we get into this other area, uh, the forecastle where all the anchor chains are. And I climb up this ladder and she's going into the bunk room and I'm at the top of this ladder and it's like, oh, I think there's a spirit, like just on the other side of this landing. And it's like this shadow peeking out from behind this column. And it's like, oh, hello. You know, and, and of course, I might have been saying this out loud or just thinking it in my head, but it was like this person just wanted me to, you know, hi, how are you? Who's here? Acknowledge. And it was so, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it was so cool. And we went into the chapel, which had not been restored yet. And we could both tell, okay, there's somebody crouching behind these boxes. And it was a spirit that was very scared and very unsure because yes, that, that ship had seen combat and it had seen aliens and it had seen all kinds of, you know, trauma. And the ship is famous for ghosts of spirits who served on the ship or just Navy, you know, former Navy people who died and wanted to go hang out on this cool ship with all the other ghosts. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of ghosts there. <laughs> and and it's one of the famous things is the engine room is in the main hangar bay and it used it's now the women's bathroom and so some people have reported feeling like somebody was watching them when they were in the bathroom or just getting an odd feeling and because the guys that used to work there in the engine room you know have a sense of humor and i didn't feel them like watching me when i was in the restroom but when I was outside of the restroom, I took, I was using black and white and we weren't, didn't have digital cameras yet. Mm -hmm. So black and white film and I developed, it's like, oh, look, there's their energy. They're, or they're, they're, they weren't orbs, but they were, you could just tell the plasma like energy yeah. shows up yeah. in the film. It's like, oh, this is so cool. And the other cool thing I love about that ship is the few times I've been there and I've been there with two different psychics, my father-in-law always shows up because he, he was air force but he was a liaison for the you know the air force and the navy and military intelligence and he'd been on there because of alien stuff and all kinds of things but he's he's been there with me especially when i've been on the flight deck both psychics said your father-in-law standing right to your left side i go i know i can feel him and yeah. they could see him wow and it was so so cool and he's been with me many times when i've given talks in england and and to small groups big groups he's always been there and I never met him when he was alive because mm. I met my husband like after his dad died. And but he and I, you know, we talk regularly through a, a medium. So it's like yeah. I I, mean, I know him now, and it's it's fabulous. So how what I year very, what year was that when this was happening? What was when and that what, was, oh, the, the early first two thousand? Oh, the first time that you went to the ship. The oh yeah the yeah because I met Mark in late. 1997 and it would have been you know a couple of years after uh -huh. that, so really late 1990s and early 2000s uh -huh, okay so, and yeah. then you went back uh, soon afterwards or uh, after? I, i've been i've been several times so uh, yeah because i've been like for the historical tour then i went for the ghosty tour with my friend and then her and another paranormal investigator you know we did like a halloween party oh. you know <laughs> So there. you're used to this stuff. <laughs> and and my, my psychic friend from England, when she came to the United States to visit us, uh, we went and she and I had other experiences there. And that would have been you know a little bit late. Well, that would have been after 2007, you know, mm -hmm, maybe mm -hmm. 2009 or 10. Yeah. And so, you know, it's it's been with multiple people. And she and I actually uh, had an alien. Well, no, we didn't encounter an alien there. We encountered a, a sailor who had been killed by an alien who was uh -huh. on the ship. Okay, now now anyway. we are. Um, let's say <laughs> y you mentioned, and a lot of other things happened there. Um, right. So we get what the paranormal is now, right? But you mentioned right. elementals, all right? Now that right. that is a topic it's on a its subject. own. Tell us about that. <laughs> Most people think of element. Yeah, it's like, well, where do you start? Most people. Well, how think much of time do we have? <laughs> as, as the fairy realm. Yeah. And but I have learned, and I didn't know anything about this 
until I met my current husband. Uh-huh. But he grew up he grew up with all this. His dad had elementals around him. Mark had elementals around him. And elementals are, you know, fairies, brownies, sprites, gnomes, trolls. There's a whole family. It's, you know, elementals is the umbrella term for that. But there's many different kinds. And, you know, you don't call a brownie a fairy because they're, they're totally different. And in our house in California, there are several that live there. Mm-hmm. And when I first was going to move into the house, my husband drew me a little map saying, okay, this one is the, the head of the garden, and she lives here, and here these other ones in the garden live at these places, and, you know, these these ones in the house, you know, live in these rooms, and this one's a brownie, this one's a sprite. And so it's very interesting because their personalities are different, and I can feel them. I can sometimes see, like, the flit of their a shadow, like, in yeah, the corner yes, of my eye. Yes, yes, yeah. When I yeah, when I've taken pictures, you can see an orb. Mm-hmm. I can't see them with my naked eye yet, but again, my English psychic friend can. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's like I've learned to you know they they're they're wonderful magical creatures and beings. I don't want to call them creatures. You know, they're interdimensional. They live for they can live for hundreds of years. Yeah, sure, sure, and, thousands really. But, um, yes, yes, it's amazing. The, yeah, when you say like, interdimensional, interdimensional yes. beings, what do you mean exactly? Just to clarify for the audience, sometimes you know they can slip into a, another dimension that is you know just another slice of reality, basically. But time know, dimension, perhaps. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's just a fraction of a second or inch away mm-hmm. from where you and I are sitting right now. So um, mm-hmm. there's, so, there's so, one that... Go on, go, ahead. go on. No, no, no. Say, there's one that lives with my husband all the time, and he remembers stuff from history from thousands of years ago and hundreds, you know, so he, he loves to chime in about, on this day in history, this mm-hmm. happened. And it's, it's fascinating what he knows and what he shares. Um, but... And sometimes the, the elementals can take different shapes. They okay, don't they shape shift. You know, okay, yeah, they, they shape shift. Mm-hmm. Especially, you know, either to, it's, it's very hard for them to get out of, to be corporeal and to, to take on a, a physical form because that takes a lot of energy. Mm-hmm. No matter whether they're looking like a squirrel or a little person or a mm-hmm. butterfly, because uh, they usually like to be in their energetic form. That's easier for them. Okay, but, so, so let's say that from the, the mm, description that you gave give us it seems that elementals are a pleasant a pleasant presence um to around us it's not a you know like a like a poltergeist who uh, no, that just no. creates havoc around us no. so elementals are uh, all all around i mean they're, they're all around like spirits i just call them spirits all of them yes. because yes. for me the it's full of spirits all over. I, I, if I have to start uh, giving them a certain nomenclature, I would go nuts. But and they do. They're very pleasant. They joke and they play, and you never know what you know. Yes. Uh, drives me crazy, you know. <laughs> and, and they can be very mischievous. It's yes, like, especially if if. You, in my house in California, they you know it's like if I did something to tick them off. Right. Like I would suddenly find something missing yeah. or I would get pushed up or down the stairs. And it's like they never hurt me. You know, I never like you totally got injured or anything like that. But I've been, you know, nudged. And but on the other hand, when I've been missing something and whether they did it or not, um, <laughs> it's like I will ask, I will let them have their laugh. And then I will ask them very kindly. It's like, will you please, I really need to find my keys or I really need to find this piece of paper. And all of a sudden, the piece of paper is like sticking right out from this big pile of paper. It's like, oh, there you are. Thank you very much. So, and, and they also love treats. And so, yeah. like, at least on the four quarters of the moon, I, I have treats for them. What do you mean and, on the four quarters? Ah, the, on oh, the four yeah. quarters so, of the moon. Well, ah. new, new moon, full moon, right. and the quarters. Right. So, I, you know, I, I like to make sure there's water in the garden. And I, you know, on the... And especially it's like you could you could really go all out and even for all kinds of holidays during the month you could put yeah. treats out because they they love treats. <laughs> Look, I'm laughing you know. when you're saying this because you get I, this, right? <laughs> well, I get this because it just happened to me last night. I will tell you about okay. it. And you know, um, I have I have a stalker. Okay, 
I've got a stalker and it's been years. I have to just, he doesn't exist. He just doesn't exist. All right, but he does. And um, I work as a voiceover uh, oh, cool. the narrator. Uh, sometimes that's one of the things I do. And, and some things can be very interesting for me to do. All right, so I got a message. All right, this is the scene. I was about to, in 15 minutes time, I was about to have a client of mine. I had to go online with a client because we had to do a reading together, a very long one, as a matter of fact. And 15 minutes before I went online, this email came to me and I was wearing a pair of um, wireless earbuds that I had just come to me the day before. I couldn't wait to have them, right? I had them in my ears. It was wonderful. The sound was fantastic. I thought, oh my God, this is... I read, I had my phone, I got the email, and I looked at that. I said, wow, what an opportunity! And I, you know, must have done something. One of these earbuds flew out of my ear, and it was 15 minutes before the phone call. And I thought, oh, please, don't, you know, my mother always used to say, the house does not steal, it just hides. Okay, so it's a, you know, I know, there's got to be here, right? So I started throwing up everything all over the place had to stop because I had my client, did the the long reading. Then after that, I started taking up everything, you know, the the, the covers, slip covers of the carpet and this, and all, I mean, upside down, under the covers, under the knee, under the mattress, in the, you know, everything, shoes, everything. Okay, finally, I'm so tired. And I was lying down in bed and often, when it happens, like I have a lot of things that are nuts that happen to me during the day, I talk to my guides and my masters and I have them tell me and I record it. I, you know, orally record it on a piece of paper on my computer and just listen to them, right? All right, so they just come out and I said, look guys, (laughs) you know, you've got to help me. This is stupid. I know it's here, right? And so the first thing they said, okay, it's in that direction, right? So it's southeast. And I knew it had to be where one of my, you know, uh, my closets were. Okay, fine. Thank you, guys. And then I said, all right, now tell me what the real reason is all this happened. Was it before, was it because I, that wasn't a real job offer? And that was the answer because I had gone immediately into the computer. I started pulling up all of my samples. They wanted a 20 second sample, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was go- starting to cut the samples and give them the best. And then I was, I turned on the light, went, and it was right where they had pointed to. And I felt oh. like a fool. I have felt like a fool. It was, it was a period of almost four hours that this scene was playing out. You know, and so, you know, here I am, a grown woman thinking, <laughs> I know, I know. But that's to tell you that Come on, this is just the stalker. You know, you got so excited. So let me, you know, let her lose one of these earbuds that she loves so much. <laughs> but anyway, that was a big, I'm sorry to take up your time, but, no, but no, 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 it was no, making no. me laugh. Okay, so now we have the elementals, right? Yes, and, and they're wonderful because they, you know, they're, there are elementals out in space, but the ones here, you know, they honor Mother. They're very obviously connected to Mother Nature. And yes, the yes, that's the difference and, between. Yeah, and they do not appreciate how we keep messing up the planet. So, yeah. you know, sometimes when there's a big rainstorm and lots of flooding, they're mad at us. And, yeah. you know, but, you know, some, we do get beautiful weather, but. Um, they're just, they're wonderful, they're wonderful beings. Like I, I know that when I go to give a talk and I used to give a lot of talks in person, but I can call on them and they help calm me. Yeah. And I always feel this energetic, you know, we're going to hold you up while you give the talk type of thing. And, And they're always there with me. And even when I went to England, I took a bunch with me and, um, they're just there to help me and support support me is is the the right word and I have felt that it's a very real presence that I can feel when they're supporting <laughs> me so I I love that yeah you know, 
I yeah. I really appreciate that. It's, no, it's, it's nice. It's always and, a positive pl- positive presence, you know, and a jovial a jovial kidding, you know. Okay, they they yeah. mess up your day a little bit, but. You laugh at yourself at the end, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. nice. It's nice. Not all yeah. cultures call them elementals. That's why I wanted to no. talk about them. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's right. not, I don't want to make any mistakes, but I believe that it's the Anglo-Saxon tradition of, of, um, of spirituality that brings the notion of fairies and things like that. They don't exist in many cultures of say the far east they have different concepts um, okay right um but anyway let's let's go on because there's this big okay. word magic and but before we go into magic i want to go into the aliens and ufos because you mentioned that they that ship had um became famous because of ufos and because of aliens what do you mean can you go into detail because i have a very wide-ranging culture on ufos and aliens i've probably read every book in the planet (laughs) and had wow that's good it's better than me Um, i i grew up watching martian movies as oh yes ray bradbury Mm mm-hmm yeah, we've probably seen, and, and our house in California is filled with all these 1950s and 60s science fiction books. I'm going, do we have to keep all these? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they, they belong to my husband's family, so I haven't thrown them away. Yeah. And then after he and I got to know each other and we were in our relationship, it finally it became apparent that, uh, and he was giving me things that he was writing and stuff, and it became apparent that, uh, and we, we never talked about, he never said, sorry, I'm rambling. He oh, never no. said when we first met, oh, by the way, he told me he'd been in the military. And yeah. His dad had been in the military. He never said, and our biggest job was UFOs and aliens. Like, thank, thankfully, it's like I probably would have run for the hills at that point. <laughs> but um, in 2004, he said, oh, I hear, you know, there's a UFO conference going to happen down in the Bay Area. Why don't, you know, you might want to go listen to it. It's like, okay. And it was fascinating. I just, uh, well, I was going to go for What kind day. of conference I, was that? What kind? It was a UFO. Ah, UFO, UFO conference, so a lot, yeah. A lot of speakers, yeah. And so I was just amazed. And by then I knew a little bit that he'd been involved with the military. And so I started talking to people and I said, well, I need to go back the next day because it was just so fascinating. And I was, you know, all I'd ever heard was a few things that he'd started sharing. And... And his his whole point, I mean, his is from the military perspective. Most people at conferences are not speaking not, from military yes, experience. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, and then by the next year, I had enough material that he had written for me, or written, because by then I had started a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. And um, I started, I had a booth at that particular UFO yeah. conference. Uh-huh. And then I started getting on radio shows, and then... In 2007, I went to England and spoke for the first time. So how cool is it that you get to go to England the very first time you're speaking about UFOs? So, <laughs> you know, and, and then, you know, he's been around aliens and stuff his whole life because that's what his dad was doing. Mm-hmm. And so he, you know, accidentally saw things that he probably shouldn't have when he was a little kid. So, but wait, and, wait, but wait, he, wait. We're, we're, we're jumping the oh, gun. Sorry. So <laughs> you, you talked uh, and you gave a talk. And what was the talk about? Uh, that that particular talk um, was mostly on here's here's the biography of my husband and his dad, so it makes you see that they and, and mostly my husband's like from an early childhood he's had some really unique experiences and he's gotten to meet a lot of really unique and it, it makes me sound like a name dropper. No, pretty, no, you know why I ask. Like, you, know, he, yeah. you know why I ask no. because it's funny that he sent you he could have gone to talk about himself no or is that he's not in pr- cool he's in prison he's in oh prison. no i'm sorry he's that's right that's right i forgot oh, okay. yeah 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 yeah, he's yeah. In prison so yeah. i'm the spokesperson <laughs> and um jesus and i'm laughing I mean, excuse would, me would, but you know if if he hadn't been in prison and by the time i met him he was there already like 10 15 years and he was so mad about being in prison um, he would have never ever talked about any of this UFO stuff because there's most of the stuff that he experienced he can't talk about and he still doesn't. Right, sure, sure. But there's there's certain things. Not everything he did was for the U.S. military. Sometimes it was for an international intelligence agency. So he's done enough so that he can share 
yeah. certain things about. So I was I was talking about his unique childhood and yeah. you know how they lived all these different places and all these famous people that they met and that you know Ian yeah. Fleming taught him how to drive a car when he was eight years old and he was babysat by these amazing people and he knew Churchill and all these cool people yeah and but he was also around he saw aliens as a kid and yeah. when he was seven he was at a human alien conference in England mm -hmm. so he saw hundreds of species of aliens as a seven-year-old oh and his English girlfriend was there with him and she was taking notes so now you know she she passed in 79 but her their daughter has shared all the all the, her diaries and stuff so we've got notes and drawings and and things wow. because my husband he he was playing with the alien children he was not taking notes uh -huh, <laughs> I, goes, see. I, I was just playing with the boys you know and the girls yeah. I, was like, I was just playing i was a kid so it, it's a lovely mix of his memories and and the notes that she took and i also talked to her through a medium so she and i talk a lot so it's it's and it, you know I've, I have found that the the wonderful thing for me is that like aliens, magic, elementals, it all kind of com goes together because aliens have witches, aliens have elementals. Wait, 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 the, wait, wait! You say yes, aliens yes. have witches? They have their own sorceresses in their okay. societies and their mm -hmm. cultures, and a lot of them have elementals. And then when groups come together, the elementals often translate for each other mm -hmm. so it, yeah. it's it's very fascinating so you know you might come from space and you you have your own elementals that you bring with them and through the guide that i work with the medium that i work with i've learned that one of my spirit guides is an alien she's mm -hmm. very much alive and she lives on earth but and i don't talk to her you know she doesn't like to talk through the medium but she has come through and i've heard her voice and uh -huh. it's like well, this is pretty cool. Mark, did you know that I have this guide and her name is blah, blah, blah? And he goes, yeah, I know her. She's an, you know, an old raptor and she and her, other, raptor. you know, a raptor. raptor. She, um, they live in England and they like to sit around and knit and get yeah. drunk or drink tea. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh God, I got to meet them. <laughs> but I haven't met them yet. Yeah, um, I was just an, so. invited um, a few weeks ago uh, to speak at the uh, fourth edition of the UFOlogy World Conference in Barcelona. Oh, wow. Yeah. And they have it every year in Barcelona, one of the largest in the world, really. And I, you know, I was initially I was flattered, and I thought, I don't know if I want to tell anybody. <laughs> I don't know if I really want to do that. You know, so I decided that, um, you know, I'd give people like you the, the spotlight. I'll just stay behind and do my mediumship and that kind of stuff, and and write about my, you know, put it in writing. Oh, cool. You know, right, but right. Uh, but it is there's. There are, it's very, very, very popular. I mean, thousands and thousands of people come to these all over the world. There's a, se a session online and there's a session in person in Barcelona, oh, wow. which is it, lovely. It's a beautiful city. But um, it, it's, you know, I, I don't know how, in Italian, there's an expression that says, now I'm saying it, but I'm also denying it. There's, uh, yeah. there, there, there is your... We're talking to people, and you talk in a certain way, in a certain context. Of course, like you, you have your two worlds, the bookkeeping person and the other person. And and I guess everyone has many different hats. And I, it's very difficult to mix those because, you know, you you can people just won't understand you that's you know, but you know i have found it's fascinating because most of my bookkeeping clients also know that i'm all in with the ufos and they uh -huh. know that's one of my passions and i go speak on that and so several of them when they see a news item it's like they'll send it joanne oh, did you see this how you know, nice this now that's you nice the new york times it's like because they know that that's what i'm really passionate about it's like I, I'm old. I want to retire from bookkeeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> but, but it's like I still need. I still need to bring in some money. But uh, it's it's fascinating because I, I love that my my clients do know that about me. And they, there's only one that thinks I'm nuts. Ah. The rest of them either don't say anything, or the rest of them are right along with me. And it's interesting because when I was working on my book, I went to. I was 
participated in like a writing group to help get some guidance and critique and stuff. And I started telling them about my UFO and paranormal and they're going, you know, why, why are you, I don't know where you're going to go with this. It's like, I don't, I don't know that, you know, it's going to get any traction. And so then I started with the chronology stuff and okay, but then all of a sudden you have mainstream media talking about UFOs in the mainstream media. Yeah. So this was just a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. And I go, oh, okay, now I get it. Yeah, this is a good thing to have in your book. I go, well, thank you, because I'm not taking it out. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> and now, this is just who I am. So. Yeah, th but there's um there's a slice, let's say, to the reality of the alien world that is not um, uh, all, you know, uh, positive. And, um, right. but again, you know, there's all this news and fake news, and it's very difficult to distinguish between uh, right. what occurs, you know, and I, I don't want to say what is real, but what occurs right. and, and what has not occurred. Um, now, do you uh, dabble even in that side of the alien um, experiences or phenomena? Uh, only to the extent that I know about several less than friendly species. Yeah. And I do mention them in my talks. And especially with Mark's military background. And, you know, I'm, I'm very open about it. he still is a Navy captain. Yeah. He's a Navy captain. Mm -hmm. And he still is in contact with active military people. Uh -huh. So he still is in the loop. Uh huh. I get <laughs> on, it on military stuff and intelligence stuff. So, you know, he knows when a negative alien group is behind, like say a current war. Yeah. Or a war a few years ago in the Middle East. Yeah, I, I'm stopping some, you some just a activity. moment. In the corner yeah. of your video, there's oh, a black shadow. head. <laughs> it looks like a shadow. It looks like a shadow. Go on. I'm sorry. It's one of my cats. No, a my real cats. cat. <laughs> a real cat. Yeah. It's, it's funny. The one that would make the most noise is at the vet today. So the others, I just let the other two are sleeping and they don't seem to bother me when I'm doing these. So yeah. it's like I didn't shut them in the room, but he's sleeping and yeah. <laughs> I interrupted um, so, you. I'm you know, sorry. There, mm -hmm. No, that's okay. There are negative. There are definitely negative alien species who are not our friends and who would love to take over the planet and who would love to make us all slaves and who do are involved with lots of kidnapping. Yeah. Thing, you know, incidents, abductions and they mm -hmm. ship abductions and they ship lots of people out to space for bad things. Mm -hmm. But. You know, and so I, I do present that because that is very real. Yeah. And since I've been, you know, active with this and knowing about this for over 20 years now, and um, my intuition is is becoming st way stronger. And yeah. so now I can look at a, an incident. I'm going, OK, I don't think that's exactly what the public story, you know, the public story is not exactly true. Mm -hmm. And. And, and I can, I used to be able to go see my husband every week and we could talk about this stuff. Now I only see him every couple months. But, oh, um, how well, sad. Well, with COVID, it's made it really hard to yeah, visit. Yeah, I so. can imagine. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, so, um, but I, I still get a lot of good information from him. But in it's like, e even though it's like, okay, I know there's a backstory about what's going on in Ukraine. Right. And, and, and there's a lot of people who are throwing out theories and he's going, they know there's a backstory, but they don't quite have it. They don't and quite have it. It's not, we don't quite have don't it. Quite let's have say. It. And it's like, but I, I know I'm, I'm gonna. It's like I know there's a bad alien group working with Putin. So I'll just put it out there. Yeah. Um. And and uh, this, it's no joke. It's no secret. I've um because I work with other uh, energy people here, and cool. we have come together to eliminate a mountain of alien negative alien groups because we were all getting hit psychically oh, and wow. it was a mess it was a mess it was I a mess bet. i swear to you on the head of my children when we did this it was the beginning of december when we did that my ev everything just seemed to subside I, it was oh, a, a breath of fresh air and relaxation yeah. all of a sudden. I kid you not. Recently, some things have been acting up. 
And I saw uh, mm -hmm. this uh, one of my colleagues, and um, I said, I knew we had to get together again in March, but it, the time is not ripe. I think that something will be happening in the next two months. But it is, like you said, um, I can't use the expression, the devil made me do it, you know, that lovely expression, the devil made me right, do it, right. you know. Well, I, it's hard for people to believe that heads of state could be influenced negatively by uh, extraterrestrial beings to the point of acting uh, against the majority of residents in that country. So, you know, this is, it's almost so unbelievable. But having said all of that, it's greed. <laughs> yeah, it's greed. But having said greed, all of that, yeah. th there's, um, we understand that the government is going to change so, so much and uh, revolutionize because it's not, we're not going to see governments as they are today. Um, right. That's very, very clear to me. And I can't put a f my finger on timing, but I will be alive. I, I plan to be around, <laughs> you know, so. No, so. Me too. <laughs> and so it's not far off, you know, and um and it's it's like and, and the story is not new. Yeah, I'm sorry. The story Go. is not new because for for years, you know, and it's like I have reports going back to the 70s, and I know this happened even before that. Yeah, you know, of aliens interacting with humans, whether they're military or government or just right. big business leaders. Right. Because you know, you it's like, well, we'll if you'll give us this, we'll do this yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah, right, you, right. If you let us kidnap these people, we'll right. give you this much technology, and we can make you big and powerful and strong. You know, yeah. in your business sure. or your like, sure, or we can make you we can make you a star. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> in, in the entertainment one of those field, you know, up like, there, one of yeah. those things or, up there. Or, you know, <laughs> if you want to be a big name in the entertainment industry we can do that for you sure. just sell sell us your soul basically yeah um so it's, it's, it's i'm it's laughing to that. you know it's making me laugh because um you, you know some something you, you change so much every day is just yeah. brings on so many changes you know and what you would do or have done yesterday seems so ridiculous to you today right, right. and and right. then right. You, and and having had the the let's say the the experiences that you've had that we have had makes you fully aware that you have no clue <laughs> of what is coming up but you can only surmise exactly. like i did with exactly. the government you know because historically i have to put one block after another and then you know right. see that in the future um it's fascinating though it really is fascinating it is, it is. it's like for me and for me it's like I know there's something I'm meant to do beyond bookkeeping. Oh, you know, I you made her funny. <laughs> I believe I, a, I, I can. Have a, I have some kind of career <laughs> or some kind of cool thing I'm supposed yes, to do. Yes, definitely. Well, yeah, and you know, it's like, and it isn't bookkeeping. And it ain't numerology. <laughs> no, no, and. I don't know what it is yet. It hasn't fallen into place yet. I just know it. You're there. doing it now, know. though. You're doing it now yes, because exactly. even I, simply talking it about it, just, yeah. You know, the the you know the the structure has the groundwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I I love all this stuff. I love meeting all these new people, and so you know, for me again, it's like I know it's going to happen. I don't know all the logistics or all the details. I'm just going to say that it is going to happen if I keep doing laying all this groundwork and meeting who I'm supposed to be meeting and you know it, it's going to be what it's going to be and I'm looking yeah. forward to that but you know yeah but <laughs> you let's at 90. let's do it let's take oh oh I, I will pray for you <laughs> um let's talk about your book midlife magic because okay. it is okay you share stories of your experiences with your husbands but um that word magic keeps coming up and we've been dancing around it but we haven't spoken about it give us a, a like I don't know if I don't want to say a brief summary of the book. What made you write the book? How about that? Okay. Um, she's looking up to the sky. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> she's looking for some, some kind of. <laughs> uh, in about 2012, I think, I met a woman at a, a 
a super soldier mind control conference I was at. And I can't oh. even remember. I don't, think I, I don't think I was a speaker. I was on a panel and I had mm-hmm. a booth. But she came up to me. We kind of met and we were saying hello. And she goes, well, when's your next story coming out? And I go, well, you know, Mark will be writing something because he's he's always writing. Yeah. No, no, I mean your next story. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. I'm, I'm not a writer. No, no. Yeah. When is your story coming out? I don't, I'm not a writer. It's like, you know, you've got a story to tell. I go, oh, okay. <laughs> And, you know, she and I run, would run into each other at all these conferences. Well, how's that book coming along? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, but then I started making notes. And as a Mormon, you learn to start writing your, your history and your family history. So I had a lot of notes about my childhood. And then it was just something kicked in. And I, I decided I would write this. And then, you know, I started. And then this woman showed up and said, well, I'm going to do this writing group. And something said, well, okay, now's the time to really get serious about your book. You've mm-hmm. written dribs and drabs. Yeah. It's like, okay. And so I started with that group and I started putting things on paper and writing it out because mm-hmm. I had a lot of these experiences and I thought, well, this is good for me. And so it didn't take that long to write the book, um, actually. You know, maybe I don't know if it even took a whole year because once I got mm-hmm. into it, I was right, just of course. Doing it. And then by then, COVID has happened. Yeah. And so, okay, well, I can't see Mark, so now I've got more time to write. And and I think my big changes in my life happened in my 40s, so that's why I called it midlife. So the yeah. title of the book and the cover, because the cover is very magical looking, it it, it just all came to me. So again, it it was a very it's like oh. The thought came into my mind. This is what you need to call the book. Yeah. And oh, here's the here's the cover I- image you need to have on the book, even though that's not anything that my editor said Wanted. I should use. Yeah. I yeah. go, this is what I you know, this is what I'm seeing. Yeah. And I knew the illustrator I wanted, and she did exactly what I wanted, and then added some fair extra fairies. It's like that's perfect. Mm-hmm. So. Do you have a copy the you can book? show us? Can you, for I those of do. you who are watching the video version, hang on, bring it right in front of your face. If you could bring it in front of your face. There you go. Midlife magic. So there is a forest there with light, yes. shimmers of and light. I'm on, a, mm-hmm. I'm on a, you know, here I am. I'm on my path. So uh-huh. I, okay. There we are. So Wow. Nice. So it's it's interesting because what the di- the book did for me was... I would say therapy because yeah, yeah. writing <laughs> is yes, I got growth, through all yeah. the, the crap about the husbands and the bad husbands and right. really look at well what did I do to my daughter by putting her through all these stuff oh, yeah. fathers but also what lessons did I learn and I realized that now I'm in a place where okay and by this time I'd already been with my you know Mark we'd already been together 20 some odd years and it's like but I I need to really stand up for myself I need to really take care of myself I can't mm-hmm. have somebody just saying well you need to be doing this you need to be doing this it's like I really had to own it right own it that's really, the story really be happy with myself it's cathartic really know, mm-hmm. like, it, it was it was fabulous and you know my daughter was this fabulous cheerleader I thought <laughs> you know, I'd say, oh mom you know how can you write about that but she never did and she got a lot of value out of the book and now my granddaughters go oh grandma you know our friends know all about you and your book it's like well did they buy a copy <laughs> yeah right 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 just <laughs> no <laughs> talk <laughs> they have, you know she they, you know your grandma's famous uh, not really but so it was just a really good process for me and yeah to, uh, the opportunity to do some inner work and to really look at what path am i on uh-huh. and what did i learn so and again, I know there's so much more. It's like of I'm course, just the beginning. that's the I'm beginning. The beginning of, yeah. yeah. So, so my question is now: yeah. Where's the second book? <laughs> <laughs> You've got it in your drawers or in your computer. I know the files are there. Come on, come on. You got the outline, it's, title, know, draft like title. I, I know. I don't know which one to do yet because I really want to write about my dad. <laughs> Me too. I've got three in the works. <laughs> I know. It's terrible. Like, and I really want to research more about my past lives so it's like I don't know which one to do and my daughter and I especially during COVID because that's why I came to Portland to be near somebody during COVID you know it's like we, we've been and she's been divorced once I've been divorced way more than once but it's like let's let's make a list of 
you know, what's on our bucket list of things we absolutely have to have in a relationship versus what need to never be in a relationship yeah. again? Yeah. You know, what are the red flags? Because I've got a whole bunch that I should have looked at that I never did. But so I, I'm not sure what the next book is going to be, but I know there's another book. Yeah, of course, at least, you know, the soon. <laughs> yeah, 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 this you know, is and great. I, I obviously have no problem chatting and talking and spewing stuff. <laughs> spewing, spewing. That's the spewing. word. <laughs> Yes, yes. Well, Joanne, it was such a delight to talk to you oh, and you uh, topics that were yeah, difficult to even, you know, broach, but but it was a delight to, to you know, get into the details of some of these things. I appreciate Thank you taking you. the time, oh, really. And I hope we can do fun. this again because the second book too. is coming and we <laughs> have so much to talk about, you know? <laughs> I know. Well, I want to hear more about you too, so we <laughs> we'll have to keep in touch. <laughs> well, <laughs> you will. We will, we will. Right. And so my, um, let's say my promise to you and your promise to me, my promise to you is having you back on the show and your promise okay. to me is writing the book. Okay. All right. <laughs> you challenged. The glove is down. You got challenged, right. The glove is down. All right. So how we, can we find uh, Joanne? We can find her on uh, a Facebook group. Ma midlife magic and then in linkedin uh joanne richards and also instagram joanne richards is that right Correct. joanne richards author for instagram and right. midlife magic and then i have a website for the book dragonhillbooks.net right dragonhillbooks.net okay i'll put that in the description of the episode thank you again a big kiss oh, thank you. Oh, you made my evening <laughs> Bye-bye, <laughs> 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 Joanne. <laughs> Bye, dear.